All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 336, The Divine Heritage of Man. Link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. Second and third links are to my books, blogs. This is 93 pages, so intermediate in length, roughly, on the shortish side. Uh, and it's about Vedanta philosophy. And, of course, this is a subgroup within Hinduism. And it takes you on through, like, the conception of what, what God is, uh, the connection of that sort of all-everything-ness, consciousness with mankind. Um, it talks about the philosophical goals that a person should be inclined towards to to sort of connect with this entity slash force. It, it, it gets a little bit deep. The philosophy here is definitely east to west style. That is that um, it, it roughly follows some elements that also inform groups like theosophy, but the latter are very west to east. So the theosophist would say, well, uh, Jesus and Krishna both were a thing, both were enlightened, both taught people in a certain time and place, but Christ is supreme because more recent, and of course, we're, we're higher up on the totem pole because of Christianity. In, in this tradition, some of these Eastern philosophers uh, and some Western philosophers that tended to lean that way, I think a few of the theosophists were more like that, it's actually Krishna uh, that's considered more prime, or other similar things. A lot of the tales in this work refer actually to Indra, um, and, and it's quite interesting. It gets into kind of, though, deep Hindu philosophy. This isn't really a beginner's work. Uh, this is more for someone, I think, who either is practicing Hinduism, intends to delve into it more than superficially, or someone who's just really interested in the philosophical religious side of, of occult literature. Uh, I don't think that it would be for someone who just wants to skim a basic introductory work on, like, the different avatars or something. Uh, this is deeper. This is more of the philosophical end. It was very good work. Uh, again, some works, when I'm editing them, I enjoy doing so more than others because I can also just read them as well. Hey, you, you know, you do a second proofreading anyway, so you're basically reading the whole book. Uh, but some of them I get more absorbed in than others. This was more on the absorbing side. Again, I don't believe necessarily in all elements of Vedanta or any other Hindu philosophy, but there are definitely elements of it that I potentially find uh, entertaining, number one, enlightened, number two. Uh, philosophies which have more with the reincarnation side of things, I tend to agree with more than those that delve into the idea that there's some permanent place after death and that in that it's very pseudo-karmic in nature. I don't really believe in karma, so you know, I definitely deviate from the average Hindu school on this. Suppose the uh, Aghori are the most wise, because you know, according to the basic premise of the philosophy, they're definitely the most detached from physicality. <laughs> they don't even care if they eat rotten animal brains. Uh, so again, link in the description of my edition of this work on Amazon. It is a good work. It would, I would highly recommend it, especially to those of you for which any element of Hinduism or Eastern philosophy are centrally uh, interesting. Second and third links to my books, blogs. I will be making the blog post for this later as well. That's about all. Peace out.